Hi everybody and welcome back to my backyard once again. Today we're gonna check out the Cadex Protos super affordable entry level digital <laughs> FPV learning kit. This is mind blowing how they managed to make it basically the same price as many analog kits out there. But here you have digital transmission you're gonna see in HD. So let's open it up and let's check out how they managed to make it so affordable. Boom! You got even a nice carrying pouch. And inside you get a USB C to C, C to A, barrel plug to XT30 mail for your goggles, and a 35 watt charger. Cleaning cloth, manual, spare canopy, and an extra set of HQ Prop 40 mm propellers. On the bottom section you have the battery pack for your goggles, it charges via USB C. Three batteries for your drone, they are 2S 850 milliamps. They are gonna give you around 10 minutes of flying each. The A Link Express LRS 2.4 gigahertz radio, the Cadex Ascent digital goggles, the Protoss drone and the 3-in-1 USB-C battery charger. Let's talk about specs starting from the Ascent goggles that look incredibly similar to the Walksnail goggles L. And basically Walksnail and Cadex are the same company, they are mostly the same goggles just a different head foam and a slightly different electronics and protocol. They are not cross compatible and the Ascent protocol is not meant to replace the Walksnail Avatar one. They are meant to coexist, Ascent being a little bit more affordable and a little bit less powerful. It's more for entry level drones and this is more for pro users. But this is super nice because it seems like they drop the price of digital down to the level of analog. For being entry-level goggles they are quite nice. You have this super cool amber light in the front. They feel quite comfy. You have this kind of hard foam pressing on your face. My nose is not pinched on the bottom. I have a slight amount of light leakage from the side and a little bit from the bottom but just minimal thing. It's gonna be different depending on your face. This is a fun exhaust. At the other side you have the menu buttons. At the bottom there is the power plug and an audio jack. SD card slot at the top for recording your footage. These two threads are for mounting a prescription lens adapter if you need to wear glasses. The screen is LCD 180p 60 frames per second. It's placed at the top, there is a 45 degrees mirror and you have two lenses right here fused together. So when you put it on, it feels super clear looking into it. Really one of the best entry level goggles I ever seen. And the interface looks modern and it's super super fast. At the moment of this review these goggles are only compatible with the Ascent Light VTX inside the Protoss drone. But I'm sure in the following months we're gonna start seeing standalone VTXs you can buy and put in pre-built drone and probably the mainstream drone companies are gonna be starting selling drones with the Ascent cameras into them. Talking about the A-Link radio, I wasn't expecting it being Express LRS 2.4 GHz. It's only 100 mW, so maximum, maximum 3 km in very good scenarios, but this radio is future-proof. You can bind it to 99% of FPV drones in the market right now. The radio is quite small as you can see. For thumb users it's gonna be fine, super comfortable. For pinchers maybe it's a little bit small but probably you can make it work. The gimbal sticks are made of metal and the gimbals themselves are whole effect sensors so they are gonna be precise, they are not potentiometers. The springs are slightly harder than what I'm used to so I need to grow accustomed to it, but it's fine. At the top you have a two-stage switch used for arming, a slider that's not mapped in this drone, but I believe they're gonna release more product probably with a tiltable gimbal. Two momentary switches up top and two three-position switches. At the bottom you have a USB-C that's used for charging and also for connecting it to a simulator so you can practice before trying acro. I like the design of the USB-C battery charger, it looks kind of a cassette player somehow. Probably they could have made a little bit smaller because all of this is extra plastic but I mean it's just nitpicking at this point. Sticking the battery in is not the most straightforward, you really have to look and line them up using the grooves. And finally let's talk about the little Protoss drone that together with the battery weighs only 104 
grams. It's super light. It comes with stickers for motor and propeller directions. They are inward spinning if you need it. And a sticker at the bottom protecting the heat sink and the time of flight sensors. Because this little drone can maintain altitude and position without using a GPS. At the front you have the little ascent light camera and it has a board down here. All the system is only 6 grams, so get excited for when they release it standalone. It transmits 180p 60 frames per second images at 20 megabits per second and it has only 100 milliwatts of transmission power, so don't expect it to go super far. You have to manually adjust the angle, there is no gimbal inside here. At the back you have a button for binding the receiver and a USB-C plug for updating the firmware. I have tried connecting it to Betaflight, but it doesn't read it, I believe it has proprietary software. I hope they release something to modify the values of this drone. There is no on off button, just plug the battery in and boom, it lights up and it turns on. This board doesn't have internal recording, so you cannot record your flight footage on the drone and maybe stabilize it in post. You need to record it on your goggles, so if the signal starts breaking out, the breakouts are gonna be recorded in the footage, just like analog. And finally, it's time to fly. Let's start flying in the first flight mode, which is position hold. This is totally for beginners. You can see the drone is right here. And without GPS, it keeps its position locked to the ground. Now it works up to 20 meters up. And it's actually pretty, pretty stable. This will allow you to really practice and understand how the drone moves. When you're ready, you can put on the goggles and start practicing the feeling of flying a FPV drone and you have a nice, nice HD video feed complementing it. Because with analog, the video feed is not the best. Here you have 180p, 60 frames per second, really, really nice. So, I'm not used to fly like this. Oh, okay, the visual positioning system, I believe, failed. Okay, let's try again. If you keep going very, very slow, it works nice. Let's go here. And the camera seems to pick up the difference in light pretty, pretty quickly, you see? You go outside, boom, and back in, boom. I see, oh, 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 I see some breakout here and there, but it's gonna be much better than analog for sure. It's not, of course, remotely as good as DJI, which uh, has managed to really provide, oh, what's happening? Yeah, depending on the environment, the sensors, have uh, a little bit of errors. Sometimes it's struggling a little bit keeping the position. So you really have to juggle it. If you go slow, it's fine. But if the terrain starts to change pretty quickly, this uh, sensor is not able to fully keep it 100% locked. So practice in a very plain environment with good lighting so the drone doesn't go haywire. You see, if I start changing and going fast, the drone loses track of where it's at and it starts acting on its own. So I suggest progressing quickly from this mode just to get the hang of it. And let's go in the next mode, which is angle. Now angle is much, much better and something I'm used to flying. Basically, you need to adjust the throttle while you fly and the drone self-levels, but it doesn't keep the position and altitude. You have full control of it. It's gonna be a little bit harder, but this is much closer to real FPV. And actually, I often fly in this mode with uh, small drones when I don't need to flip and do stuff like that. This is gonna be a very nice mode to chase chicken, and you can go, you see, much faster here. I believe you can see a little bit of stuttering here and there. When I have uh, trees in the middle, of course the signal is only 100 milliwatts, but 
I would say it's better than analog breakouts that really make it unflyable sometimes. Let's see, going back here, yeah, you see? But it's flyable. You can see we have 35 milliseconds of latency, which is not uh, incredible, but it's a super entry-level system. When I go behind stuff, the latency goes up, probably 40, 50, I can feel the latency. Now I don't feel it at 35, I won't gonna say it's fine, but you see it goes 43 here. Oh, you see it stutters a little bit, 100 milliseconds, starts to be quite a lot. Let's now fly in full acro. You see the LEDs on the side go red, meaning you can take off in acro mode. This is fully manual, so if you're a beginner, don't do it if you don't know what you're doing. To activate acro, you need to take off in this mode. You cannot switch it mid-flight. This is for protecting beginners from not activating it because you can lose control pretty quickly. I wish there was a setting to disable it because sometimes I want to switch it mid-flight, but being a drone for beginner is nice. So, I am flying in acro, but it uh, feels quite slow input. I guess this is for beginners, but Look how long it takes to flip. <laughs> this is really for beginners. I am not used to these low rates. You can change them with the other three positions which I read on the manual. I see the stuttering and I am scared. I don't know this system. It's digital, so... Oh, 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 oh what was that? Ah, when you start losing signal, it limits the camera view. Wow, that's cool. Let's see again. I want to see that uh, banding again. Wow. Ha! That's cool. And, you know, we are outdoors, there is a slight amount of breeze. The drone is uh, quite stable, you can see it's tuned pretty nicely. Ah, maybe the switch needs to be at the top. Yeah, it seems a little bit faster. But still, the response is super slow. Like, it really gives you a ton of dead band. Um, at least I'm not used to this race, maybe if you are if you are used to a lot of expo, yeah, I can control it. It's just not uh, reacting super fast. Yeah, I mean, I'm getting the hang of it. If you start going faster, the stuttering becomes a little bit more apparent, even at close range, and it becomes a little bit harder to fly. I believe they have to update the firmware and make it a little bit smoother, because you see, yeah. But, is it better than analog? Smoothness-wise, no, smoothness not. Not even uh, latency-wise. You only see better, and I feel like seeing better is such a great advantage. I can see the branches, I can plan my navigation much better, and I can avoid... Yeah, I'm to... Oh my god, I'm talking! Let's try doing... Uh, uh. Maybe I'm gonna... Uh. You see, uh, it's not gonna be a good drone for learning agro. That's for certain. You can learn manual mode, but not acrobatics maneuver with this. Because uh, it's really, really bad at doing them. I was initially expecting the price of this kit to be around 400-500 bucks, but it's actually 359. I don't know how, but they made digital affordable, just like analog, basically. You can see many entry-level analog kits at the same price as this, and it's just crazy to me. And I can't wait to see more products and standalone VTXs releasing on this protocol. Do I recommend this kit for FPV beginners? I feel like yes, because the value proposition is just crazy, but I have a few caveats to say. First of all, this is a totally new protocol, goggles and drone, and there are no other products in the market right now. So if you lose the drone, if you want to change it, you cannot. Maybe you can remove the camera and VTX from here and mount it into another drone, but that's not for beginners to do, probably. Maybe you can, but I'm gonna say just let's see what else comes out in the market. I'm sure in the next weeks and months there will be a lot of products coming out with this protocol and then I will really recommend it because you have future-proof your gear. Radio is already future-proof because it has Espresso LRS built into it. 
Looking at the competition, you have many entry-level analog FPV kits coming out. They're gonna be maybe 50, 100 bucks less than this one for a similar drone. For example, the Beta FPV Aquila 16 has the positioning system. You still get a Express LRS compatible radio. An analog is gonna be compatible with every analog drone in the market, which is the majority of them at the moment. But you get a way worse image quality and image reception. So as soon as you go behind a tree, you see static and it's really ugly. So maybe I justify spending a little bit more for something that you see a little bit better with. Looking at the more expensive side of the spectrum, you can start with a digital FPV system just like this one. The closest thing is gonna be probably HD0, but there are not many entry-level kits out there. I saw one from Emax that's like 100, 150 bucks more than this one. It's gonna perform similar. You're gonna have maybe a little bit less image quality, but a little bit more range and lower latency. But you're still getting entry-level gear that you're gonna have to change eventually. You can go with the Worksnail Avatar system, but that's gonna be super expensive and not very beginner-friendly, and I believe that's why they are making this kit. Lastly, I have my recommendation to everybody who has a little bit more money to spend at the beginning, because I believe you're gonna spend less money down the line, since you start with top-of-the-line equipment, which you don't need to replace, because it already Already works flawlessly. And this is the DJI Digital Transmission System, specifically the drones made by DJI like the DJI Avatar 1, the DJI Neo, which you can find with the FPV gear at around 600-700 bucks, so it's double the price of what we saw today, and the DJI Avatar 2 if you have a little bit more money to spend. And all of those drones are gonna work so much better, they fly much more precise for much longer, they record internal footage which is mind-blowingly good, and you can go out for kilometers not worrying about the image transmission. You're gonna have a much more enjoyable experience. But still, this being at more than half the price of what DJI offers, I believe it's super competitive, especially now in US that they have banned DJI products. I really do hope for Cadex to improve not only value-wise, because already a ton of value, but also performance-wise. I want to see better signal, less stuttering, more products maybe with onboard video recording and better, longer, more power transmission signal so it can really rival DJI. And that's all for today. As always, remember to like, subscribe and comment on this video. Let me know what you think about this super interesting product and protocol. If you want to buy something, check out the links in the description below because clicking on them, you help my channel a lot. Thank you so much. Stay safe. And happy flying. Bye.